What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Y'all know we got another banger for you, so kick back, relax, and come take a ride with your boy. Now, UConn lost on the court last night in a hard-fought effort against Iowa, where some people are calling that last offensive foul on Aaliyah Edwards very suspect and very bad timing, but... I talked about that in my last video, so we're not going to get into all that because we're going to get into something else as far as UConn picking up a win. That's right. They just signed the number one recruit in the nation, winning the Sarah Strong Sweepstakes, folks. They signed the number one 2024 Player of the Year, Nate Smith Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American. Just an elite talent, man, that they have joining this squad, and it's great news. UConn Husky fans, I know y'all are still hurting and wielding over that game last night, but rejoice, because you won the Sarah Strong sweepstakes. But before we get into all that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest, and join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now... Let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Strong made her commitment at Chipotle Nationals where her team is competing. Grace Christian, um, she's led them to state championships. She's just racked up a lot of the awards that you can get. Pretty much everything. She don't want everything. We'll get into that. But we know that she was choosing between UConn and two of her in-state home schools, North Carolina and Duke. And it felt like UConn was the leader of the pack from the beginning. She's been rumored to be going to UConn and linked to the Huskies. And now now it is official. Big loss, big miss for uh, UNC and Duke. She's going to be a program changer wherever she goes. And with UConn, they get an instant superstar to replace Aaliyah Edwards and pair next to Paige Beckers. But looking at UConn, man, they are bringing back a lot of talent. And I would not be surprised to see them in the national championship game next season. Paige Beckers, their leading scorer, who averaged 21.9 points per game, 5.2 assists and 3 point or 5.2 rebounds and 3.8 assists. Their leader, the crown jewel of this team has decided to come back for another year. So you were already in good shape with that. But then you get your th third leading scorer, Ashlyn Shade, who wasn't expected to play a whole lot. The freshman will be back. AZ Fudd, who only played in two games this year. Averaged 15 last year, scored 11 this year in a short stint. She will be back. So you have maybe arguably the best backcourt in the nation with Beckers and Fudd. And then you also bring back Aubrey Griffin, the 6'1 versatile guard who's coming back. Averaged 9.5 points per game. She averaged 11 last year. That's two double-digit scores. Plus you bring back freshman point guard K.K. Arnold. So we're talking about a loaded backcourt even though they are lead, lead, losing their lead assist. Nika Mule, who is deciding to leave UConn, but heck of a career. Their all-time assist leader. But you have a loaded backcourt. You also bring back... The freshman, Cadence Samuels, who saw some action this year as well, some unexpected minutes. She played in 36 games, averaged 5 points, 2.6 rebounds, half an assist. You also bring back Ice Brady, another freshman who was dependent on and had some big games for UConn this year off the bench. She averaged 4.5 points per game, 3.3 assists. You also get Caroline Descharm. Four points, two rebounds, and assist. Another veteran on this team, a junior, who's coming back. This backcourt with Deshaun, Arnold, Griffin, Fudd, Becker, Shade, that is a lot of guards that they're going to be at Coach Jito Ariyama's disposal, man. I'm telling you right now. Um, they also have Amari DeBerry, who will be back as well. Jenna L. Alfie, another big that they have. Um, the, I mean, the front court, and then you add in Sarah Strong. They're also bringing in the number four ranked player, Ali Zabel, a very talented guard, hard nose that can flat out shoot that rock. And Morgan Chelly, the number 18th player overall, 
who's got some size. She's a versatile wing who's going to provide even more depth, more shooting, and more length for this team. And then you finish it off with Sarah Strong, a generational level talent, man. She's coming in. She's a winner, and she wants to continue to win. She looks like Zach Randolph on the block. She's a monster, a beautiful mid-range game, but she's an elite passer. She can handle the ball. I mean, we're talking about a player that could play the two, the three, or the four. The size to bang down low at 6'2 and be a monster down low, be a number one option on that low block. Skilled footwork, timing, soft hands, great touch around the rim, knows how to use her size, knows how to create separation. Then on the other side, she can handle the ball. She's an elite passer, which is one of the things that is going to help. Like we've seen like Maya Moore and players like that, those forwards that have that overall skill set under Coach Gina Ariyama. That's where we're going to see what's strong. Her passing is going to help her get on the floor quicker. You look at it, rebounding, elite on the glass as well. Uh, she's special, man. She's won a World Cup medal in under 18 and two of them in the 3v3 tournaments. She's a McDonald's All-American, co-MVP of that game this year, Nate Smith High School Player of the Year, a Jordan brand All-American. She's won state titles. She's also the North Carolina's State Gatorade Player of the Year, second time this year winning it, North Carolina Miss Basketball. And we mentioned she was the Nate Smith Player of the Year this year as well. She averaged 23 points, 16 rebounds, and 4.7 assists, 3.3 steals per game, and 2.3 blocks. Just showing you. At 6'2", averaging 3.3 steals is crazy. She's blocking shots. She's scoring 16 boards a game, almost 5 assists per game. Are you kidding me? She's won consecutive state titles with them and scored 30 points and had 21 rebounds in the title game. That just shows you a little bit of the uh, information, just a little background in case you weren't familiar with Sarah Strong and her resume and what she's bringing to this roster. And she said, just watching UConn play, just watching them play, watching and realize I can help them and be there. I'm just ready to be there and practice and play. Strong said of her decision to choose UConn. She also added she felt like the Huskies could help her reach her goal of playing in the WNBA. I like the style and feel like I feel a need there. I'm drawn to the championship culture. She's done a lot of winning, and she absolutely will fit an immediate need with her versatility. Adding another playmaker. They have another playmaker replacing Aaliyah Edwards and Nika Mule. They have a playmaker that can, you know, they can play through, and she can make plays for other players. She's the type of player that makes other players around her better. She's going to be an immediate impact player, a fan favorite, high energy, high motor, and just the most skilled player in the nation, man. This is a huge win for UConn. A consolation prize of sorts for them losing out uh, on a trip to the national championship game. They land Sarah Strong, and it felt like this was the right move. It felt like she could be an immediate impact player. And I told y'all in my la one of my last videos that I thought that Aaliyah Edwards falling was her getting out and declaring for the WNBA draft was the last domino to fall before Sarah Strong's commitment, and we get it just, you know, a few days later. So, <clears throat> I'm just looking at it. I love the fit. I love her skill set. I think Coach Gina Ariyama is going to unlock another level or two out of her game just with her passing ability, her ability to bring the ball up the court and genuinely handle the rock, attack off the dribble, get to the basket. She's just the versatility, man. She's going to be a walking mismatch. Just about any night she's on the floor, they're adding more size. You know, they can play her at the four and he'll have El Alfie at the five. You know what I'm saying? They can move Beckers to the three. They have a legit front court now coming back this year. They still have Ice Brady as well, who could be in the starting lineup, who could be in the fold as well um, in that starting lineup. Definitely will be in the rotation. Then you think about having Beckers at the three potentially. And then you got, you know, AZ Fudd as well as, you know, uh, Griffin coming back. So maybe you have Beckers at the one 
and have Griffin at the three instead and then have AZ Flood at the two. You know, that that's probably a more likely lineup. But just saying you got a lot of different things to play with. But I do think Paige Beckers goes back to her uh, normal position of point guard next year because they'll have the size and the depth to really throw a lot of different looks at teams depending on the matchup and how it benefits them. But great fit. Coach Ariyama's had players like this in the past, versatile forwards that have been able to be three-level scorers and three-level threats, handling the ball, passing the ball, shooting it, defending, crashing the glass. You know, UConn got beat up on the glass a lot this year. I don't think that'll be an issue next season. I think, you know, they'll be much bigger um, and just have a lot more depth, man. This team's looking scary, y'all. This team is looking scary. I think they bounce back next year and get to the national championship game. And don't be surprised if UConn runs the table and, and you know, goes undefeated next season, y'all. Don't be surprised if they run the table and go undefeated next season. I'm just saying that's how talented this team is. Even without this stellar recruiting class, coming into this season before the injuries, UConn was ranked unanimously the number two team in the nation. And we expect them to be the biggest challenge to South Carolina and LSU, you know, and it didn't work out quite how everybody thought with the injuries, of course, but they still had a stellar season. You have those freshmen that got that much-needed, invaluable experience with Brady, Arnold, and Shade, who are going to be ready to contribute even more next season. You got Fudd, you got Griffin, you got Beckers, you add Strong, and, you know, that the, the sky's the limit for UConn, man. It feels like UConn's back. Like, not saying they went anywhere, because y'all heard, you know, Ariyama sounding the alarm in my last video. Not saying they went anywhere, y'all, but UConn is back. Like, they are here, man. They, this is going to be an uh, arms battle between them and South Carolina next season, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm predicting the national championship matchup, South Carolina, UConn battling it out for the championship next year. Book it, lock it in, count it, because it's going to happen. I'm telling you, UConn is going to be back with a vengeance next season, and I'm just excited. We're all witnesses to get to watch it. But strong, major commitment, top player, does a lot of great things with the basketball, does a lot of great things without the basketball, versatile defender. She's going to bring a lot of versatility, man. That's the big key for her. Um, in this lineup, man, just them finding creative ways to use her and utilize that skill set. But y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments, where y'all put this recruiting class, how UConn will fare next season. What are y'all looking at? What is the, the upside here? What is the, the, the ceiling for this UConn team next year and for years to come with a relatively young squad? Um, some veterans mixed in there too, but a lot of young pieces on this team coming in. So y'all holler at me, coming in, coming back, all that good stuff. Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments. Holla at your boy. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, I am Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Until next time, hey, we out.